Mason Greenwood was once one of the brightest young talents in football and was seen as a future piece of Manchester United and the England national team. However, in present day, Greenwood's stocks have plummeted, with him previously being charged with attempted rape and assault after images and voice recordings leaked from his girlfriend. So how did Mason Greenwood go from being an exceptional talent to a big scumbag? Well, let's take a look at the story of Mason Greenwood so far. Mason Greenwood was born on October 1st, 2001 in Bradford, England. He was so good with the ball at his feet that by the time he was only 6 years old, he joined Manchester United's academy. He kept progressing through the youth ranks of the academy with him continuously showing his coaches how exceptional he was with both of his feet and also how good he was with driving the ball forward, which is why he became a winger. Then when Mason turned 16, years old, he was already playing for the under 18 squad of Manchester United despite still being eligible for the under 16 And even though he was playing around 2 years up, he ended up finishing as the top scorer of the under 18 Premier League North with 17 goals in 21 games, helping United win the under 18 Premier League. Additionally, in the ICGT Trophy, an international youth football tournament in the Netherlands, Greenwood was named the player of the tournament as Manchester United went on to win the competition. Greenwood was carrying this youth United squad hard and it was showing. In fact, the first team coaches even noticed how good Greenwood was with the under 18 squad. That's when in July 2018, Jose Mourinho and the rest of the first team staff allowed Greenwood to travel with them on their preseason tour of the United States. And over there is when Greenwood made his non-competitive debut for United when they went up against Club America. Greenwood was showing signs of his early promise that Manchester United even offered him his first professional contract in October 2018. And two months later in December, Jose Mourinho allowed him to train with the first team ahead of their Champions League clash against Valencia. However, his competitive debut would come under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer in March 2019, where he made his competitive debut for the club against PS she in that famous 3-1 game where Marcus Rashford scored the last minute penalty. What a place to get your debut, huh? Greenwood's debut against PSG made him the second youngest player to represent United in a European competition and also the youngest ever in the Champions League era at the age of just 17 years and 156 days old. During the 18-19 campaign though, Greenwood spent most of the time in Premier League 2 with Manchester United's B team and in that league, he was given the Jimmy Murphy Young Player of the Year award since he was the club's best player in that U team. The 19-20 season will be the start of Mason Greenwood's first full professional season with United. However, before that, Greenwood started a relationship with a girl in his high school and her name is Harriet Robson. He stayed with her throughout the entire 1920 campaign where Mason Greenwood enjoyed a very successful first season that was impacted by COVID-19 where he got 19 goals and 4 assists in 51 games, showing very good promise to the Manchester United coaches and fans. With this season, Greenwood had established himself as one of the future best players for Manchester United and definitely the England national team. However, during the 1920 season, the drama for Greenwood had already started. In fact, during the pandemic, it was hard for Greenwood to keep a relationship with Harriet Robson and call the relationship off, breaking up with her. They were allegedly having a ton of problems in the relationship and some could even call it toxic, but that definitely played a role in why Mason and Harriet broke up. The early signs of Mason Greenwood being a troublemaker started to show. In August 2020, during peak COVID, Mason Greenwood had already hosted five or six parties in breach of the social distancing regulations. Not even at his own house though, but a house he rented off of Airbnb. That's crazy. Mason was already in hot water for breaking regulations, but then in September, despite this, Gareth Southgate called him up for the Nations League games against Iceland and Denmark. Greenwood's first time with the England senior team. Mason Greenwood also got his debut with the senior team as well, with him replacing Harry Kane as a 78th minute substitute against Iceland. However, for the next game against Denmark, they would have to make the trip to Copenhagen, and Greenwood did not make the trip and instead was sent home. Why? Well, while the England team was resting at the hotel in Iceland before they left for Denmark, Mason Greenwood met Icelandic Marla Nadia through a dating app. Remember, Mason is single at this time. After a day of talking with her, Mason had the bright idea of bringing her over to the hotel since he couldn't go outside to meet her due to the COVID regulations that England camp had. So he brought her over, and even got her to bring a friend from Man City star boy Phil Foden. Obviously, these two boys were trying to do the naughty naughty, you naughty naughty, and I have no idea whether they were successful or not, but the leaked images might just show that. Anyways, after the Icelandic model left, both Mason Greenwood and Phil Foden were caught due to the security cameras, and when Gareth Southgate found out, he sent both of the boys home. Mason Greenwood brought the England camp Jeopardy, all because he couldn't keep his schlong in his pants. With his breach of COVID regulations, due to Mason's stupidity, there was a chance that UEFA could have forced England to forfeit the game against Denmark. Luckily, that didn't happen. But this ended up being the last time Mason Greenwood would be with the England national team, while Foden became a mainstay with the squad. Anyways, after this, at the start of the 2021 season apparently, Mason Greenwood thought it would be a good idea to get back with Harriet Robson, the ex-girlfriend, and that's exactly what happened. With all this off-the-pitch stuff going on with Mason Greenwood regarding his dating life, he had a very poor start to the 2021 season. However, towards the end of the campaign around March time, he ended the season off strongly, bagging 8 goals and getting 1 assist in 11 games, once again showing that he was the future of Manchester United. With his goal against Roma, he helped United 
United make it to the final of the Europa League as well against Villarreal, where United would get unlucky in penalties losing 12-11 thanks to De Gea missing it from the spot. It was an intense penalty shootout though for sure. Despite Greenwood's boost of form towards the end of the season though, he wasn't called up by Southgate for the Euros, which just shows that Southgate was definitely done with Greenwood after his Iceland incident. Anyways, moving on to the next 21-22 season, things were looking up for United. The English club splashed a lot of money over the summer on new players to help the academy star boys Rashford and Greenwood out. They signed Jadon Sancho, Rafael Varane, and of course Cristiano Ronaldo. With all these new star signings, Greenwood was the player that stood out initially, with him scoring three goals in the first three games of the season, one for each game, helping United stay undefeated throughout that. Many United fans felt like this was Greenwood's season to truly show how good he could be, and for him to establish himself as one of the best young wingers in the world. However, in the next 21 games that Mason Greenwood played, he only managed to get three goals. Clearly, something was off about Greenwood, since his form dropped off massively out of nowhere. Yes, United were going through a ton of problems, like losing Solskjaer, the main man who believed in Greenwood, and replacing him with Rolf Ragnick, a manager with little to no experience. Well, something was definitely off, because on January 30th, 2022, the world found out that Mason Greenwood was tapped in the head. This was because on Instagram, the girlfriend of Mason Greenwood, Harriet Robson, posted pictures of bruises and cuts on her body with the caption, to anyone who wants to know what Mason Greenwood does to me, essentially hinting that Mason Greenwood was a domestic abuser. I don't think I should show the pictures of Harriet Robson being bruised and all that stuff, because one, I don't think YouTube is going to allow that, and two, I don't want to trigger anything on anybody, but the pictures are out there on the internet though if you really want to see it. Anyways, that's not it though, because there was also an audio recording that had been leaked that showed one of the many alleged incidents of Mason Greenwood's alleged and abuse. I'm not going to play the clip for you, obviously it feels wrong to do that, but I'm going to show you a transcript on screen on what was said, and explain it basically. Harriet Robson is basically saying that she doesn't want to have sex, but Macy Greenwood pretty much tells her to put her legs up, even with her saying no she doesn't want to. She then continues to say no, and Mason says he doesn't care what she wants, and if he asks politely, she would say no. Then at the end, apparently she pushes him off, and he says push me one more time and watch what happens. And then the audio cuts off. Haunting stuff, I know. Then once this was all published to Instagram, it spread like wildfire with every single major news outlet reporting the incident. Football fans all around the world were in shock, with some of them being absolutely disgusted that one of their footballing idols, Mason Greenwood, was a terrible scumbag. Man United then became aware of what's going on, and then made the decision to suspend him indefinitely. A little while later, Harry Robson's dad, Alan, speaks about what just happened, saying he felt terrible for all the things that were happening to his daughter. However, the father goes on to say that Harry told them her phone was hacked, and that she was devastated that all of this was released. The father then surprisingly talks about Mason Greenwood in a positive-ish light, saying they'd known him since he was a young boy and that he's been a part of the family for two to three years now and then went on to talk about how his daughter and Mason were in love despite their rocky relationship as of recent. Nah, I'm sorry. If I was a father that had a daughter going through an abusive relationship and found out she was actually getting abused, I would be fuming, unlike Harry Robson's father is in this instance. Mason Greenwood was then arrested and faced three charges in court, attempted rape relating to an alleged incident, engaging in controlling and coercive behavior, and assault occasioning actual bodily harm. With the photo and audio evidence that was there, it seemed like there was no way that Greenwood was going to escape this one, and that his career was most definitely over. However, we all thought wrong. That's because in February 2023, the prosecution was discontinued due to a combination of a withdrawal of key witnesses, meaning that there was no longer a realistic prospect of conviction. Now I know what you guys might be thinking. Why would a key witness, like Harriet Robson for example, drop out of prosecuting Greenwood? Well, there could be a ton of reasons for this, but I need y'all to understand something, especially the people who for some reason back Greenwood to this day. The case being dropped does not equal him being innocent. They are the same thing. Hitafi spokespeople, y'all should take some notes. Oftentimes, there's a plethora of reasons why a key witness would drop out of a case like this. The defendant might have reconciled with them, forgiven them, or they just feel nervous about the entire situation and feel in fear if they let this prosecution go forward. Now, it also might be important to add that Harriet Robson, the woman who was allegedly, and I probably have to say allegedly, abused by Mason Greenwood, has gone back with them and is now pregnant with their child together. Now, a lot of football fans, including myself, to be honest, were thinking, why would she get back with a dude who abused her? It makes no sense unless she was lying. Well, it doesn't seem like she was lying. Because first of all, why would Mason even get back with her if she was lying? Come on, use your brains. Secondly, it's a pretty common thing for a victim of abuse to go back to the abuser. In fact, according to the National Domestic Violence Hotline, survivors of abuse return to their abusive partners an average of seven times before they leave for good. It sounds unbelievable, I know. Why would anyone return to the one doing the abusing? But if you've never been in an abusive relationship, including me, I've never been, we won't truly understand how it feels to be in that situation. Oftentimes too, leaving the relationship is the most dangerous thing. So there's that. Also, to prosecute someone for the crimes Mason Greenwood has allegedly, I have to say allegedly, done is extremely difficult. I'm going to be 100% honest with y'all. If you for some reason think that the evidence that was provided, meaning the pictures and the audio recordings of the crimes that were committed, was not enough evidence, then I don't really know what to say. Like I said, even with substantial
circumstantial evidence like this, it's extremely difficult to prosecute someone for these crimes, especially someone as famous and as filthy rich as Mason Greenwood is. It's borderline impossible. Plus, if the hacked phone thing is true, Harriet didn't even want this to go public, even though she definitely should have mentioned this abusive relationship to someone. So even when one of the main key witnesses didn't want what Mason Greenwood did go to public, and also the fact that it's super, super hard to prosecute someone for these sort of crimes, since it essentially boils down to one person's word against another, it was basically always going to be impossible for Greenwood to be convicted here. I really wish people used their brains more when it comes to serious stuff like this, especially people who still like Greenwood for whatever reason. I'm looking at you, a minority of Hatafe fans and staff and some United fans. Like I already said, a drop case does not equal innocence. It's not the same thing, fam. Now, why am I mentioning Hatafe so much, a random Spanish club? Well, let me get to that. Now, for the longest time throughout this entire Mason Greenwood abuse process, Manchester United didn't take any decisive action and have basically tried their hardest to not bring this topic up. United did conduct their own investigation, which is why during this entire process, it went really quiet. But even the months after the case got officially dropped, United were still relatively quiet, making fans wonder what actually is going to happen to Mason Greenwood. However, in August of 2023, it came out thanks to The Athletic that Manchester United delayed announcing a decision over the future of Mason Greenwood due to the fact that they still needed more time to explain their decision to stakeholders of the club. Now, we're not that stupid, or at least I'm not. I'm stupid, but not that stupid. But United wouldn't have to explain their decision to stakeholders if they were planning to release him. And there's a very likely chance that United were thinking about bringing him back. So from the first minute since the charges got dropped, May United have been trying to find reasons and a good time to bring Mason Greenwood back to the club. If Mason Greenwood did not have world-class potential or even a financial gain through him, the people at power at United wouldn't even think twice about bringing him back. Which just sucks because if he was an average footballer, like many people are, he would have been kicked out of the club no matter what the court decision was. But since it's Greenwood, United have provided him with the benefit of the doubt basically, probably because they still see a financial gain from him. And that's exactly right. Manchester United allegedly wanted to keep him and even asked Ten Hag if it was okay and Ten Hag apparently gave the green light. However, after a negative fan outburst, United decided it would be best to send Greenwood away from Old Trafford to continue his footballing career. However, they didn't want to sell him and instead only wanted to let him go out on loan. So maybe in the future, there is still a chance of Greenwood returning to Manchester United. Anyways, on deadline day, there was a chance that Mason Greenwood could be headed to Lazio in the Serie A. How fitting. But the deal fell apart and Hatafe came in and signed him on loan. Hatafe had made multiple signings this window, by the way, but the media attention they're personally showing Greenwood is crazy. They're putting videos of him meeting fans, pictures, training videos, etc. And not gonna lie, Hitafi knows exactly what they are doing. They know this will only drive up interest and publicity for the club. And what was that saying? All publicity is good publicity? Something like that. Well, Hitafi definitely believes in that saying. Plus, big outlets are eating this media attention from Hitafi up, especially for Brito Romano, who's posting every little thing that has to do with Mason Greenwood. Now, I'm not gonna stand up on this moral high ground and pretend I'm some all righteous person talking smack on Fabrizio because after all, I'm making a YouTube video on Mason Greenwood. But this media attention, especially from someone as respectable and big as Fabrizio Romano, just kind of rubs me the wrong way. That's all. Still love his work though, no cap. But yeah, after only months of his charges got dropped, the most controversial figure in football, Mason Greenwood, is back on the pitch. How sad. All in all, I stand by the saying innocent until proven guilty. But the fact that photo and audio evidence couldn't convict someone as big as Mason Greenwood just shows how incredibly stupid it is to leave your entire judgment up to a court decision. Sometimes you gotta think for yourself. And honestly, if you're one of those people who backs Mason Greenwood and for some reason stand by him, then honestly, you're just disappointing in it. Like, I beg you to show your own mother the audio and photo evidence of Mason Greenwood and then tell her that you still stand by him. She would definitely be disappointed. And if what I'm saying describes you, then not gonna lie, you've probably never felt the touch of a woman. Now, actually, nah, bro, I've gone too far. You've probably never had a conversation with another woman that isn't your mother. Football fans like that are probably on Twitter and TikTok scrolling mindlessly every day, watching football games here and there, with no sense on how the real world works. Just sad. Anyways, thank you guys for watching this one. I know this one's a little different from my usual kind of videos, but I wanted to make a video talking about how I really felt about the Mason Greenwood situation. And yes, your eyes aren't lying to you, bro. I did dye my hair. I'll go into detail about that sometime later, probably. I've also probably made a community post about it as well. But yeah, if you haven't already, please remember to subscribe to my channel. I would really appreciate it. And hit me up with a follow on Twitter and Instagram. That would mean the world to me. And also, if you want to learn more about a superstar in football and a superstar who's actually a good person, Pedri, you definitely want to check out this video right here. You won't regret it.